What's going on, everybody? Happy Monday. Happy beginning of the week. Some of us are off today due to the federal holiday. Most of you know USPS is closed today. You gotta go uh, tomorrow. They're gonna be packed with packages. Packed with packages from the sports card world out there. I was off the last four days, so I kind of, I guess you could say, pushed different things different days to give me more time to do it other than slamming it all into a day or two for the weekend. A lot of craziness on football this weekend. A lot of craziness out there. Uh, set up at a card show this weekend. That video will come out tomorrow. There's a little twist to that video. And disclaimer, uh, ahead of time on to it, I didn't get a whole lot of footage due to being very busy at the show. Um, so there won't be a whole lot of beginning footage. But there's a good twist to the whole video. That a lot of different points that I want to bring out on to it. So let's move on to today's video. 9.5 million sports cards were graded, uh, were authenticated, I should say, and graded in 2022. Sports cards, a total of 15 million, I'm going to call them trading cards, were graded between PSA, SGC, CSG, and Beckett last year. Insane numbers. Now, I believe PSA was somewhere around like 7.5 million. I, I'm not scrolling down to look at this right now. But you got to remember, there were some months they were almost grading a million cards. So as you can start looking, and Grunt Dad, um, if you follow his YouTube channel, he does a good breakdown of it. He also posts the information on the Facebook group for me. And I know it's on my slabs and a few other places out there. But it shows you, and if you really start charting stuff and doing all the pies and graphs and all the craziness out there you'll see you know as psa caught up there was less and less being graded and that the new bulks are taking 30 45 days not business days about 30 45 days unless yours gets lost in the sauce somewhere that might be 60 that's one of mine right now uh because i'm getting stuff back after it but that's a lot still a lot of sport chart sports cards and trading cards however you want to look at between the 9.5 or 15 million PSA still holds about three quarters of the market. Great. Oh, 7.4. I said about seven and a half. Gemrate.com. If you guys want to, I post this link in the description. You guys click on bring you this article. Click Gemrate. It'll give you all the mathematical stuff you need to know about cards all month long. And they post this stuff. I believe it's on a monthly basis, too. Uh, I don't know if they post stuff all throughout the month, but I know at least once a month they dig. We used to do a video on to it. SGC almost graded a million, so we'll say 900,000 cards. Impressive for SGC. My first thoughts when I read this, I'll bet you a good chunk of it was vintage. We're going to discuss that. CSG, then Lonely Beckett. Um, not too sure with Beckett on their turnaround times or CSG, because I have not used them both. Well, I haven't used it CSG ever. Beckett I haven't used in like two, two and a half years. SGC is about a three-day turnaround from the time they get into your stuff gets out the door. Uh, maybe four, depending on where it falls in that day. And then PSA, they're pretty much ahead of their schedule, too. That's 65 days right now. We'll see how long that sustains. Gaming cards were the most of any trading card out there. Pokemon, Magic the Gathering, etc. Charizard is still king. Charizard is the goat of it all. I mean, takes out Jordan, LeBron, Brady, uh, Mickey Mantle, Babe Ruth, all that. It's just insane. Oop. They just use this piece of the button here if we'd have been moving here. So, the most graded player, Michael Jordan in the sports card world. Surprise, surprise, right? And you look at, here's the numbers, 350,000 Jordans in 2022. That's a lot of Michael Jordans. And we're going to talk about the Jordan Fleer rookie here at the very end of it all. Kobe Bryant, 143,000. LeBron, 129. Brady, 110. Herbert, just over 100. Burrow, 96,000. Then you got Morant, Griffey, Jeter, Zion, Otani, and O'Neal. All round out most graded players at PSA. There's where it starts getting interesting. While Jordan and Brady topped SGC's list, the company also saw 14,000 Mickey Mantle cards come through its office. Now, I will say from going to a lot of shows, I saw a lot of Mantles. And I was sitting there talking about this, and I said, I bet you they probably graded six to 8,000 Mickey Mantles. 
Wow, was I way under. How was I way under. Um, Burrow and Mac Jones were also high on SGC's list they talk about here as well, too. There's a nice Mickey Mail 9-5. Clean copy. I'd love to have that. All right. So you start looking at PSAs. 90-91 Fleer, Jordan. Way overproduced. Same with the Topps rookie year, Shaq. Uh, 89 Griffey. 89, I, like I said, a lot of people don't know these stories, but they I, Upper Deck used to go to these shows with 800 cow boxes. How many Griffeys you want for $15, $20, $25 a pop? And you'd pay for them before the show. And I'm telling you, they would sell like hotcakes. They would sell like hotcakes. Because back then, everybody was trying, you know, there wasn't the age of the internet and all this stuff. People traveled to flea markets to buy from uh, dealers. You had X amount of card shops in the area. It was just one of those things. Okay, here's a nice one. SGC graded over 20,000. Cards from 58, 59, 60 tops baseball. That's a lot of cards. SGC has always had the respect of the vintage collectors out there. Prior to COVID, all that stuff there, you would always see a lot of SGC vintage out there. You could take it as trusted. The stuff like Fives and Blow were always somewhat comparable to PSA. They were close, I'll tell you that. And they're still relatively close right now. As you start getting those higher, higher grades, you'll start noticing a bigger difference on to the values of those cards. But like I'm saying, SGC Vintage, I've never had issues with picking it up, selling it. I never even had thoughts of cracking this stuff out to go to PSA. Won't hit that. PSA grade 117,000 cards from the 1920 Prism Basketball set. Zion um, Grant Rookie Year. And then you look at 2020 Prism 113,000. Big names in that too. But a lot of ultra, brand new, whatever you want to call it, all graded there. Okay, this is what I want to talk about. This Jordan rookie here, the Fleer. A lot of people consider this, like, if they get a hold of it, that's the, one of their holy grails out there. For me, it's not. And I'm going to explain why. The star cards are a lot limited compared to how much was produced this FLIR. The star cards were mostly for like a geographical area when they were doing it because of the sports teams out there. So if you ever notice when you get them, I have a one near me now. I have a couple of sets out there and stuff that I picked up just along the way. Um, those there just are, to me, less po um, populated out there. They're harder to find, and when you do see them, people always look at them. Now, for the longest time, you only had one company that could grade star cards, and that's because they had the star guy there, Beckett. This Fleer Jordan, and the best example I could use, if I would have went, when I went to the show on Saturday, if somebody had a Jordan, this seven, I'm just going to throw a price out because I know they're all dipping like Daniel out there. If that card there was selling for four to five thousand dollars and the guy wouldn't budge off his price at five, and I didn't really care for the centering or whatever onto it, there's plenty of other ways that I could obtain that card out there. And they're plentiful. Go look at the pop reports. Prior to COVID, and look at how many SGC, PSA, and Beck had all graded. And then look at the uh, at rate current. Huge numbers. Huge numbers. And most people know you're getting anywhere from two to three Jordan rookies per box. You take that, divide that in that total number, that's how many boxes are out there, plus how much is still out there are sealed. You have plenty of chances to get it, is what I'm saying. If you are not in your comfortable range of buying it and you see it there and all of a sudden you know you start getting the big old eyes and everything, your heart starts pounding, you're like, I'm going to get this. Okay, he's not going to take lower. I'm just going to do it. I'm going to pull the trigger. You could pull the trigger plenty of other ways and not have to spend 
if you don't want to be if you know out of your range i should say onto the card if you don't want to spend more than your hey i want to be right here onto i don't want to spend a dollar more don't settle for it you could find these trust me they're everywhere they're everywhere just because it's a local show and you don't usually see it go to a bigger show somewhere near you and you'll find plenty of them there dealers willing to work on to them because a seven well you see how many eights there are how many nines there are how many tens there are now it's insane amount insane well not tens but you guys will see what i'm talking about compared to what it was uh all right that's pretty much it guys uh, like i said you guys could read into it digging the numbers more i don't want to make a super long video since we're already over 10 minutes on but this was really great data Thank you to Sports Collectors Daily for posting the write-up on this. You saved me a lot of time of digging through the data. Gemrate, always a pleasure you guys doing this stuff. It makes a lot of work easier for me that I can just read over the cliff notes here and speak it out, let everybody know. This week, like I said, uh, more videos be coming out. I kind of took a little break this weekend from doing videos just to get reset. I had a lot of stuff to post for sale a lot of shipments had the whatnot live maybe uh i'm a little bit of addicted to whatnot trying to find them steals and deals too uh let's see here saturday on a league of her own's youtube channel i will be on their podcast that's her and mr and fuego guys check it out i believe it starts eight eastern maybe it's nine eastern off the check on to it but you guys get a chance to come by, stop in here. They always respond to the chat. I'm trying to think here. No shows this weekend. I'll be at Louisville the following one. But that's it, guys. Can't think of any more. I'm out. Catch y'all later.